<laughs> ah, there you are. How wonderful to see you. Have you come for the story? <laughs> Fabulous. Well, this isn't just any old story. Some often repeated fairy tale that everyone knows. This is your story. Your imagination and ideas are going to shape this story. It is going to be so exciting. <laughs> so, did you bring the pen and the paper that I asked you to bring on the invite? You did. Let's see them. Give them a wave. <gasps> Wonderful. Now, the first thing I need you to do is write the numbers 1 to 15 down the side of your paper, leaving lots of room on the rest of the paper to be able to write other things down. Now, if you'd like a bit of time to do this, you can always press pause to this video and press play again when you're ready. You finished writing the numbers? Perfect. Now, this is your answer sheet. This is going to be very important. I'm going to ask you 15 questions and you write your answer to those questions on your answer sheet and these answers are going to make up your story later on. You'll see it's going to be so much fun. So when I ask you a question I want you to think of the first thing that pops into your head and write that down next to the number of the question. Are you ready? Pens at the ready? Paper at the ready? Imaginations at the ready? Then let's go! Question number one. What sound does a fart make? <laughs> oh, or a bottom burp, if we're going to be very polite. So if you write that down... Uh, actually, I'm not sure how you write down a fart sound. Is it a, a PFF for like a sound? Or maybe it's a T ha 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 for a sound. I'm not sure. Whatever reminds you of your answer to question number one. Done it? Brilliant. Question number two. What is your least favourite vegetable? Well, this is easy peasy. <laughs> and I literally mean easy peasy. For me, it's peas. Ugh. What's your least favourite vegetable? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. I can understand that. Okay, question number three. What is your favourite animal? What's your favourite animal, Humphrey? Hmm, well, you are a badger dog, so maybe badgers? Hmm, he's staying very quiet on the subject. What's your favourite animal? Question number four. Oh, this is so easy. What is the name of your favourite teacher? Everyone has a favourite teacher. <laughs> hey, maybe after you've done the story, when you do see them again at school, you can tell them they're part of your story. I bet they'd be so chuffed. Okay, written it? Excellent. Question number five. Now this requires your imagination. What is your favourite? mythical or make-believe creature. Now, hmm, mermaids are very popular, uh, as are unicorns. Now, I think I might go for the Loch Ness Monster. A bit more scary. <laughs> Have you written it? Question six. Okay, quickest off the block. What is your favourite food? This is so easy. Oh, think of all that delicious food. Well, I'm sure you've written that. That takes no time at all. Question number seven. Ooh, <laughs> this is a bit naughty. Can you name something stinky? <laughs> now, your dad's feet might be a true answer, but it's not very nice. So <laughs> have a think of something else. What can you think of that's stinky? Write it down. Great. And remember, you can pause this video at any time if you need a little bit more time to write down your answers. Question number eight. I want you to get in touch with your feelings now. 
because I want you to write down an emotion. It could be happy, it could be sad, you could be proud, you could be scared. What do you think? You've written it, excellent. So question number nine. I want you to write down something you would use in the kitchen. So this might be something when you're baking, perhaps it's pots and pans or a whisk or a ladle or something as simple as a fork. Excellent. Question number 10. Now I want you to take your imagination out into the woods or parks around you and I want you to think of your favourite insect. Now insects sometimes get bad press but they can be so amazing. Think of how good a honeybee is, good old fluffy bumblebee or how pretty a ladybird or a butterfly is, or how strong an ant is. There is so much to choose from. I hope you've written your answer down. Question number 11. Name a musical instrument. Now perhaps this is a musical instrument that you play. That would be good. Or maybe it's something that you like to listen to. Question number 12. I want you to think about that happy emotion I talked about earlier because now I want you to write down a word you say when you're happy. So maybe it's woohoo or yippee or hurrah or biscuits. <laughs> Whatever that word is, write it down next to the number 12. Question 13. Oh, this is my favourite kind of question because it's about food. What is your favourite treat food? Oh, I can just picture a big cake stand with a huge, huge lemon drizzle covered in lashings of cream. Oh, what's yours? What is it? Oh yes, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Question 14. What is your favourite activity to do? Maybe you like riding your bike, or reading, or colouring. What's your favourite thing to do, Humphrey? Chasing your ball, maybe? It might be eating. Or perhaps it's sleeping. Mm. Have you written yours down? Excellent. And here we are at our final question. Yes, and this is quite a tricky one. For question 15, I want you to write down a very large number. Now, I want this to be a number that you can say, so not just lots of numbers in a row, but maybe it might be a million, or a billion, or a gazillion. <laughs> I bet you know numbers much bigger than me. So pop them down next to number 15. You've done it, you've done. That's it, you have completed your 15 questions, which means you have your element to the story ready to go. Oh, this is so exciting. So, how does this fit into the story, I hear you ask? Well, I am a magical storyteller after all. So when we go into the story, you will see there are numbers on some of the pages. Numbers that look like this. So when you see these numbers, they relate to the answers on your answer sheet on that number. When you see the number sparkle and flash like this, that is when you need to shout your answer to join in with the story. So let's give it a go. When you see it sparkle and flash, you shout. Excellent. Let's try that in a bit of a story format. So, hmm, I've got an idea. Once upon a time in the land of, it's flashing. Excellent. Oh, I never thought that a kitchen item would make such a good land name, but that's actually rather good, well done. <laughs> okay, let's try a different one. Are you ready? Nice big voices again. <laughs> One day school was suddenly overrun with... Perfect! Oh, that was 
was ideal. <laughs> and who thought you'd ever see those at school? <laughs> well, you are ready for your story adventure. So whenever you see a number, get those big voices ready and enjoy your story. Oh, there's one last thing we need to do. <laughs> we need to open the storybook. So this is where I need your biggest voices. I want to hear a big woohoo and that will activate the storybook. So big voices ready after three. One, two, three, woohoo. Hmm. Well, that was good, but it obviously wasn't loud enough to open our storybook. I know you can do louder than that. Are we ready? After three, one, two, three. Once upon a time, there was an emperor. They were called Emperor, ruler of the, and they were feared across the land. They were feared because they would often make the most silly decisions that would affect the whole country in the worst possible ways. Like the time they decided to ban all from the realm. And it meant that every person who either was one or was related to one had to be banished. And whole families were split up and many people were never seen again. It was a hard place to live. But they were also feared because they would often pretend to be something that they were not like capable of ruling over a large realm. And this was scary for everyone. One day, Emperor decided their wardrobe needed a bit of a refresher and they called for the Royal Tailor. They were called and had recently adopted her and felt bad leaving it at home. So, had brought it with them. My liege. Why have you brought a... with you? Uh, this is... and I recently adopted... I don't care. Silence. I asked you here because I need new clothes. New clothes that represent how fantastic I am how clever I am, how perfect I am, how everybody else is rubbish and I am the best. Uh, I, I'm not really sure if that is possible, my liege. Make it possible, because if it isn't, I shall take your recently adopted and throw it into a and then after I have, I'll throw you in too. Our poor tailor took their home in great misery. How were they supposed to be able to make clothes that represented how fantastic, clever and perfect Emperor was if Emperor wasn't any of these things? Oh... Oh, woe is me! I am undone! This is an impossible task! But suddenly they heard a voice! And it was the voice of their adopted pet! Who was unexpectedly magical! And also very wise! Yes, it is I! Little did you know when you adopted me that I would be so fantastically magical and wise. <laughs> I didn't. What a surprise. It's very lucky you took me to see the Emperor so I could witness their cruelty and stupidity because now I will very happily assist you in... <gasps> Taking them down! Sorry, what? I have been sent by an underground rebel group called the... 
We are dedicated to bringing down Emperor. And we have chosen you to do it. The nation needs you, and I'm here to help you. That's why I'm a magic. I am but a tailor. A chosen tailor. And you are going to sew the Emperor new clothes out of, wait for it, air. Air? Air. You will sew the most beautiful clothes out of sweet, sweet nothing. And you will take the clothes of nothing to the Emperor and you will tell them that only the most clever, the most fantastic, the most perfect people are able to see the fabric that the clothes are made from. And, get this, this is the best bit. Emperor will believe you. But, but, but if I make the clothes from nothing, then there will be nothing there. And if Emperor puts them on, then they will be wearing nothing. So therefore Emperor will be... Shall we say it together? Okay. Naked! Naked. Oh my goodness. This is the most audacious idea I have ever heard. Let's sew. The tailor and their sewed absolutely nothing all night. For well, it was a long night of what probably looked like miming to anyone peering through the window. Just sewing thin air. <laughs> what a sight! But by the morning they had finished sewing nothing and it was time to go and see the emperor. I hope you're here with good news. I hope you have the best clothes ever made for anyone ever. If you please, my liege, I have made you something so special, so rare, so precious, and yet I am nervous. For why are you nervous? For I have used a fabric that only the most clever the most fantastic and most perfect of people can see. What? Not even I could see it as I was sewing it as I am not clever enough, not fantastic enough, and certainly not perfect enough to see it. I had to feel my way around it. <laughs> but from what I could feel, I can tell you that I have made the most perfect set of clothes that anyone has ever seen. <laughs> or not seen, I should say. <laughs> This must be a joke. You must be joking. This is a funny joke and I'm laughing. I promise it's not a joke. The fabric is so special and so uh, magical. But yes, maybe I was foolish to try and bring it here. I shall take it away and think of something else. Just you wait one minute. Did you say magical? I did. I love magic. Look, I can make my thumb split into two. Watch. Uh, very good, my liege. And you say only those that are clever enough and fantastic enough and perfect enough can see this fabric? Yes, indeed. Show me the clothes! Very well. But don't be sad if you can't see them. 
Why wouldn't I be able to see them? Well... Of course I will be able to see them. Wow. Oh, I mean, wow. Can you see the clothes? Of course I can see them. They're so bright and shiny and colourful. Yes! <laughs> Do take them out to look at them fully. Oh, yes. Yes. These are entirely my kind of clothes. I love clothes like these. These are definitely clothes that I could see. These are the bee's knees indeed. I love them. You do. How could I not? These are made especially for me. For I am the only one clever enough and fantastic enough and perfect enough to see them. I shall put them on this instance so that I can parade through the town. Uh, very well. And with that, Emperor took off all their clothes and put on the new clothes made of nothing. The tailor tried very hard not to laugh, but struggled wildly and had to pretend to be a... to cover their giggles. <laughs> the emperor wouldn't have noticed anyway because they were so thrilled about their new clothes. It's time to go out into the world now. It is time for the people to see my glory. Oh, they will certainly see that. Lead the way and tell them all about my new clothes. And off they went into town. The tailor played a... whilst announcing the news of the new clothes. Hear ye, hear ye. The emperor has new clothes. <laughs> made of the finest fabric that only the most clever, the most fantastic and the most perfect of people can see. It is invisible to the naked eye, unless, like the emperor, you are all those things. Behold, our mighty leader! And out the emperor marched, completely and utterly naked. Behold my glory! <gasps> And all of the people in the crowd held their breath. For no one wanted to admit that they weren't clever enough, or fantastic enough, or perfect enough to see the fabric. I'm the most clever, the most fantastic, the most perfect in all the world. You shall all bow down to me. And the whole crowd bowed down, all except one, a child. One single child remained standing and staring at the emperor. And before the emperor could voice their displeasure, the child said, Mummy, Daddy, why is the emperor completely naked? And the whole crowd sucked in their breath and held it and the tailor sucked in their breath and held it and the emperor started to go a bright shade of pink stupid child i only appear naked to you because you are not clever fantastic or perfect enough to see my clothes but why would you want to wear clothes that no one can see. Because it proves to the world how clever and fantastic and perfect I am. And the child thought about this for a moment and then took a big breath and said, But I can see your bum! And everyone else in the crowd started to nod and agree and murmur and point and the emperor 
started to look wildly around. You can see my bum. Can you all see my bum? And everything else. <laughs> I'm naked to you. Uh, of course you are. You have nothing on. <laughs> Yes, I can see your butt. No, I'm clever. I'm fantastic. I'm perfect. No, you're not. You're naked. And the nudie emperor ran away to their castle in horror, while the tailor and their adopted pets high-fived. And the whole crowd laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> and then, because everyone was feeling so happy, they decided to make the child the new ruler of... and called them Emperor! <laughs> and on the first day of their reign, the child made a new rule. <laughs> From now on, we must only eat, <laughs> and every day we must. <laughs> and Emperor ran away and was never heard of again. And the tailor and their adopted lived happily ever after. And Emperor ruled for. Years. And never, ever pretended to be something that they were not. The End